Hello and welcome to Rugger Matrix International, episode 227. Ben Kimber, looking forward to this one. G'day, mate. Uh, hold on, is that you? What is going on here? <laughs> a little bit of a trim, mate, a little bit of a trim. Oh, nice. I took a bit of a haircut, much like the All Blacks. <laughs> yes, they did get chopped up at the weekend. Wow, what a weekend of uh, international rugby, the Autumn Series. Let's go through the results. Uh, Ireland 40 beating New Zealand 29 the Massive. first time in 111 years as much has been made about the fact that the Cubs won for the first time in a century too so that was uh, terrific stuff South Africa 31-31 against the British Barbarians Wales lost 32-8 to Australia Japan losing by 54 points to 22 Argentina that was a crazy game if you get to see the highlights have a look at that Maori All Blacks 54 thrashed the United States Eagles 7 can I say the strike issue of the week could be something to do with the Ireland 40, New Zealand 29 result? I think that's a pretty safe bet there, Go for uh, it. Mr. Sen. <laughs> uh, the strike issue of the week, and thank you to our sponsor, Strike Car Cradles. They're fantastic. Fantastic. The strike issue of the week has got to be what did the All Blacks get wrong, and importantly, what did Ireland get right for an enormous result, a massive game, a super game of rugby, but a result that meant that the world record has been stopped and set one more time at 18. Well, they're coached by Joe Schmidt, who's an absolutely brilliant coach. And uh, I think that uh, he was sitting there waiting for the All Blacks. And at the end of a long season, domestically, he was ready to pounce with a game plan that worked. Yeah, he was. And just before we get into the game too much, I just want to say how excited that makes me for the Lions Tour next year. Uh, Joe Schmidt, I think, dropped a, a little hint that he's going to be there as part of the team, uh, the coaching team, and, you know, why wouldn't you take him? <laughs> but uh, that's really going to rev it up for next year's Lions Tour, um, and you hope that there's going to be a lot in that. Geez, uh, it's, it's New Zealand versus themselves, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit in the coaching ranks. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so the issue of the week is uh, New Zealand's defeat. And I've got to say, all the stuff I've seen on social media, Ben, has been really positive from the Kiwis, who just said, well done, Ireland, no whinging whatsoever. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point to make. Um, I think Gatlin came out and said he was a bit embarrassed to be a Kiwi or something similar in that regard, which is really just a shot across the bows ahead yeah. of, the, of the Lions Tour, etc. next year. Um, I think the response, particularly from our Rugger Matrix crew, has been excellent, sensational, exactly what you'd expect. Um, no one's call it crying foul, no one's saying anything other than the better team won on the day. But of course, what we've also had is a hell of a lot of great, great investigation by our, our viewers. Um, and a lot of the points that were made on our Facebook page and our YouTube page are some of the things I'm going to touch on, but I'll wait till the com comments of the week to talk about uh, who, who made some really good points. And of course, the people that count most are the players and coaching staff, and they have been outstanding. Um, Steve Hansen, post-game, tremendous. Kieran Reid as well, all the players. And Steve Hansen on the field obviously would have been gutted about that, but uh, he spoke to Tony Johnson, a guest only a couple of weeks a great ago man. on this pro program, and uh, he was pretty upfront. Said yeah. Ireland were, were too good a side, and was pretty honest about how they played, but also Kieran Reid about how they weren't exactly. He believed they weren't up for the task. Yeah, and uh, I think the great thing that Kieran Reid said too is you can tell it. It meant a lot. Of course, it meant a lot. Yeah. But he he went. Uh, you know, all due respect to Italy next week, but we'll be looking at Dublin very, very closely, and you can expect them to really focus on that. Yeah, but I think uh, Italy are, are going to cop a pound. Oh, they they yeah. will cop the wrath <laughs> of the All Blacks. You don't want to meet the All Blacks after they've been beaten and in such a great theatre like yeah. that. So, uh, so Ben, look, it was a wonderful win by Ireland. They are a smart team. They've got really good players, and they've got good players in key positions. That's what I like, strike power. What do you think about their performance and did they uh, deserve the victory? Absolutely, unequivocally deserved that victory. The, and the word you touched on there, which is the right word, is smart. I mean, Joe Schmidt clearly had this team up and ready. One of the most amazing things about this victory is coming in cold. Wales were a little slow out of the gates against the Wallabies and I wasn't really surprised at that, getting the team together for the first time, facing a Southern Hemisphere team that's coming you know, off the back of a, a lot of solid games together. But this Ireland team, got together on, in the US, foreign area, foreign soil, with very little you know, serious preparation uh, in terms of test matches, and played a smart, complete game of rugby. Connor Murray, wow, yeah. what, what a game the number nine had. Johnny Sexton, Kearney, the, and, and the forward pack, I, I struggled to pick out a forward from Ireland. They all played the game so well, and they did what we said you needed to do against this all-black side. You had to get a bit of luck, but you also had to just back yourself, play the game you wanted to play. 
Now, all through the, the TRC, the Rugby Championship, we talked about the patches of play, the 50 or 60 minutes, where opposition took it to the All Blacks and did well. So, you know, controlled the ball, kicked well, made the right choices, and then got swept away. Ireland were better than all of them at playing the right game at the right time. Yes. They really exposed the fringes, which we talked about also, that there was a bit of room around mm. the ruck. They found that space, but they also then would shift it wide. So mixing it up between in the fringes or wide, and then Connor Murray's kicking and Sexton's kicking, spot on. The box kick that lands in the right place, finding the line out of your own 22 and taking Ben Smith out of play. Beautifully executed game. We didn't discuss before this show what we're going to talk about, just loosely, but I'm so glad you mentioned that point about the game plan and changing the game to, to meet certain parts of the match against the All Blacks because this is what Ireland does really well. And they did it to Australia in their last visit to, uh, I was going to say Lansdowne Road, but it's uh, Aviva Stadium these days. They'd mix it up, pace. One second they'd bring it in tight and they'd vary it. They, play, they can play one half differently to the next. They have the discipline to do that. And Ireland did that brilliantly, not just against Australia, but the fact that they did it against the All Blacks and caught the All Blacks, who I think were missing a bit of continuity without their second rise. Undoubtedly. Massively Not so. just their second rise. We'll talk about the All Blacks yeah. team in a second. But I think um, the point is, you can't go out there and play rugby, and this is what I'm sick of people saying, you've got to concentrate on your own game. That's all we can worry about. If you're playing with no one standing opposing you, it'd be a great run, wouldn't it? But the Ireland team was there to disrupt everything that Kiwis were doing, and they did it in a clever way, but they could change their game at any moment. And they've got smart players that will then enact the game plan. That's the difference with Ireland. That's why they're a smart team. I predicted them to get to the final of the World Cup last year, but they lost their champion in Paul O'Connell, had serious injuries uh, heading into their last few games, and to me, that killed them off but now they've moved on they are a great team on the rise and that was a win as they say in golf commentary for the ages yeah and and the all blacks just really couldn't settle the the island kept it moving it starts and ends as we all know in rugby and we saw this in the wallabies game too with the physical side if you can't compete physically that it doesn't matter what else you want to do you can't get there this island team did compete physically they punched it up they were strong in defense their drift defense was really working nicely coming out man on man and shutting them down. They did a great job of that. Uh, and the All Blacks team just never quite got their rhythm. And let's get into this All Blacks team because, you know, hindsight's 100%. And it's always, you know, you can always pick apart a coach later on what they did wrong, particularly when they when they lose. I do want to talk about Hanson's selection. Yeah. Now, he, he's he's playing a longer game than us. We're talking about the game we just saw and what happened. He Some of his selections were clearly... Are clearly, and all through you know his coaching career, are clearly about often more than the game they're in. They're about bringing players in and depth, and that's been shown to be a fantastic way to approach the game. But what did he get wrong in this 15? I think there was a few things. Well, firstly... I don't know what that means. <laughs> that's Siri. It doesn't know what it means. It's just going well, on. I'm going to tell you, Siri. I'm glad you <laughs> Siri. asked. Siri. Um, uh, but clearly, uh, he had it was missing three fir uh, first-choice second rowers, right? So yes. a lot to cover there. But, you know... So uh, there's a flow-on effect there. There is, yeah. but you know you can't talk about that too much. Teams have to respond to that, yeah. right? And he and, said that after the game. Uh, exactly no right. Excuse. And depth is something this All Blacks team is about. Yes. Um, but losing those three blokes, and I think particularly uh, the first choice two, uh, Retallick and Whitelock, mm. um, very, very noticeable that they weren't in the game. But putting Kano in the second row uh, alongside Tupolotu and then Squire on the side meant there was a little bit of unease in that new combo. Mm. So I think if you've got a bit of unease in an area, if there's a certain area, why would he introduce a couple more areas of unease or change yeah. that he probably didn't really need to? Yeah. And there's two in particular here. One is Smith. Now I personally think Smith is better than Perinara and I would pick him over TJ, but he'd been out for a couple of weeks. We're over in the US, bring him back in, throw him straight in. Why not bring him off the bench? Let mm. TJ start. And we saw when TJ came on, he brought a lot of spark. Oh, he did, he, he did. did. And then in the centers, Resting Anton Leonard Brown, and now you, you can't see Crotty getting an injury, so you can't really expect that. But resting Anton Leonard Brown, but Moala in, who was a different player, didn't settle as nicely. And then Israel Dag was out as well, and uh, out of the out of the 23. So I think just too many changes, particularly when part of your engine room was going to be unsettled, and we saw that very much in the lineout. Yeah, it was an interesting call, Ben, because uh, having been in those selection meetings before with these coaches, they really try and, when they've had a couple of injuries, minimise 
the positional changes after that. So it was surprising some of the selections for the All Blacks. But as we've said before, no excuses. They have amazing depth. So they, they needed to, to win with that team on the paddock. Look, if it went 45 minutes, who knows, because they were on the way back. But I want to ask you about this. Other teams fade. Ireland kept going. Ireland looked fit, and uh, against the fittest team in world rugby, I thought it was extraordinary. Well, I think I think they looked fit the last 20 minutes, which is when we see the All Blacks came up, and, you know, hands up if you didn't think the All Blacks were going to win it for a yeah. while there. Um, but uh, I think... The Ireland managed the game quite well. Yeah, but see, and there was a lot of blokes. It's that my Rocky were, Elson theory. Yeah, Remember when Rocky a, started, he didn't know when to rest. But the Ireland team knew when to no, take no, their breathers. The, the point I'm making is they were managing the game by having a little lie down at the right yeah. time, right? They slowed the game down. So it's not just about your breathers, it's about getting to the line out, getting to the game scrum, fit. falling over and if having you know a, bit of a knee game. problem. <laughs> you know, they had a few issues, and I yeah. think that's, you know, it's fair enough. Yeah. Nothing we haven't seen from other teams over time. Brett's rugby over, yeah. the, over the centuries. Well, yeah. not centuries, but yeah. it's pretty feels like that. <laughs> um, so that was an amazing effort. Let's talk about um, their uh, linchpin, their spine, like uh, Connor Murray. And to me, I think the fact that he stood up, uh, you know, uh, one of the world's, Aaron Smith, one of the world's best halfbacks, you know, yeah. the two of them going toe to toe, left him standing there as a, a supposedly a pillar who was waving him by to score a try. Mm. That was a great example of playing what's in front of you. And Ireland did that well, as well as playing their game plan. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that try up because basically there was a try by Ireland and a try by the All Blacks that I thought really encapsulated the game very nicely. That try by Connor Murray was one. Murray was everywhere. He was into it. He was sharp. And he saw that hole. Smith drifted, looked away. Yeah. If you go back and have a look at that try, uh, you might notice there's a bit of a lazy runner who blocks... I think one of the All Blacks props from coming across uh, in defence. I don't think it really changed anything. But, but the reason I bring it up is because it's the kind of stuff the All Blacks have done very well over the years. It's just be, being in the right place at the right time to create a little bit of change in the scenario. That was one try that stood out. Yeah. The other try was Scott Barrett's try, which I thought was a fantastic try. And that's when I thought, here come the All Blacks, they're going to win this. Yeah. And, and the was a great arm over yeah. to uh, finish the try off too. But the reason I, I really liked that try was because in that try, we saw what this All Blacks team has been great about, which is forwards who play like backs, skill and young blokes coming through. So we saw, I think it was, um, it was, it was hooker to six, squire, short ball to Barrett on the cut through. So like it, it went two... Six and you know, well, four or five, but yeah. he's, he's a second rower. Two, six, four, you know, second rower, bang through, roll over and score. And I thought that right there is why this All Blacks team has won the second half at least of their 18 in a row, and why I thought they were going to come, come home and win it. But the, the Irish, in front of 62,000 fans in the city where a 108 year hoodoo had just been broken, yep. um, found that ticker to keep it together. And they were brave. They were brave. They went for the line. They went for their rolling malls. They played smart and they were brave. And what a great win. Yeah, but they also went for the points when they were on offer. And they mixed that up well. They, they had a good sense of when to go for goal. And they did take them when they were absolutely on offer and didn't waste those opportunities. So they mixed that up well. But they actually electrified the game as well with their width when they needed to. I mean, you can't waste guys like Carney and Zebo. And uh, they did a brilliant job. And the other thing I'd be... I'd reckon that the uh, Kiwi coaching staff would be disappointed with is the the Kiwis' mall defence because when they got the mall going, uh, the Island team they pretty much looked unstoppable. So that that needs to be tweaked over the next couple of games because the Italians will have a go at them as well. Yeah, um, I think uh, we saw we saw um, Hanson hook a few guys mm. early, make a bit of change, bring some guys on. He moved Barrett into that second row, but you know they got in the walls as well. As the, as, the, as, the, as the clock wound down, and they, I think they had Cody Taylor was the last guy left on the bench, they had to bring him on. Artie Sevilla went to the wing. Artie Sevilla had an unhappy time in that last 10 minutes mm. playing well out of position on that wing. And then that, that last try the Irish scored, you know, which I thought was another example of a really smart play. Wasn't it? And that was when everyone, the commentators called it, we all thought it. They thought the scrum's on top here. They're just going to go for the push over five metres out. Ball came out of the back immediately. The eight or the replacement eight rolls off, pops the inside ball, and straight through for a try. Artic Sevilla, 
didn't really know where he was or what he was doing at that point, and, and you know, good luck to him, but it was a, it was a rough finish. All right, so before we move on to the Australian game, uh, let's just go into that uh, Maori All Black game, and it was an absolute flogging over the United States Eagles. Uh, Akira Iwani was unbelievable again. The massive number eight was involved in all sorts of crazy tries. There was one beautiful little line out, which um, he just strolled over from. But if you delve into that result, do the All Black selectors uh, look into the the Maori team and and try and pull some players out of that? Oh, of course. This you know this very strong team, and and I think you know there was a lot of talk before this Ireland win that people thought the Maori team would be the best place team to give the All Blacks a run. Yes. Now that's clearly not the case, but um, some really sharp play. I only saw a few highlights of that game. I haven't seen the lot, um, mainly because you know this issue in Australia of not having games on TV. Oh, yeah. um, I didn't have a chance to watch the Murray Isn't game. It a, is a show, it's a real indictment of where the game is. Yeah. yeah. That uh, coverage of the game, no free-to-wear coverage in Australia, and you had to scramble to get any sort of coverage of the All Blacks. It was pretty hard. Yeah, so I streamed this morning, and actually that, that brings me to a question I have for all of our, our viewers. Um, I've only watched the game once. Normally I watch every game twice before a show to make sure I've been through it. I get my thoughts out of the first game. Uh, first viewing, and then I'll watch it just to see what I thought if I, what I thought was right. So I haven't verified this, but I thought Kieran Reid had a really quiet game. Now I said that's only on one viewing so far. So please, if you're going to post some comments in your comments, let me know what you thought of Kieran Reid's game, and I'm going to try and get back and watch it again. Um, but I thought when I when I went over my notes and when I thought about what happened in the game, I, I really had very little from him except a couple of infringements. He was lazy around the ruck. He was lying around the ball a couple of times. They were costly for the team. And they were hold. costly. So I think he had a, a very unhappy game as captain, but I'm happy to be corrected if you saw good things. Post a comment and let me know. Look, he may have admitted much that much in the post-match interview when uh, he said that uh, you know we weren't up for it. So maybe he was talking about himself there, yeah. that they may not have been in the frame of mind. So this comes back to the psychology we keep hammering about every week. Even though these great elite athletes can do everything on the paddock, if they're not switched on upstairs, then mm. they're in trouble. And Ireland were totally switched on. Congratulations, Ireland. Fantastic. Uh, we love you all. I follow their cricket team too. They're pretty good as well. They play with a lot of heart. So um, I'm pretty stoked for them. So um, Australia, defeated Wales. Very sharp, very direct. Um, could have been a lot better if you had a few um, handling errors. Wales, obviously not the best performance of the year. And uh, Wales have a terrible record in recent years against Australia. But it was good to see Bernard Foley, who did what happened all weekend. Mm. All the great tries against good defence happened uh, from generated from close to the line, to the game line. And he worked that well again. And the Australians scored a pretty handsome victory against Wales in Cardiff. Uh, what do you think about it? Oh, I thought it was an excellent win. Um, really, uh, you know, the Wallabies have had some rough trots uh, in recent times, some poor games where they've played good in patches. This was a good solid 80 minutes. They probably drifted five minutes here or there, um, but they really, they came out with intent. Um, I saw a little bit of the post-match press conference. Checker looked much happier, I thought, in this. <laughs> I wonder, wonder what the difference was. <laughs> he looked much happier this week in his post-match press conference. His first comments were about attitude. They generally are, though. He likes to talk about attitude. Uh, he likes to say it's all within our control, more than, you know, we got... Uh, beaten on the day um, but uh, mate, uh, very very strong from the forward pack and um, four five and eight to Marnie uh, mm. the two and the two big guys in the middle really settling in I think and providing a lot of punch mm. Kepu's playing well off the back of that as well so the, the 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 punch of the forward pack great the physical dominance from the start was very very clear Wales started cold as we sort of thought they might and straight away, Australia on the front foot. And as soon as they had that front foot ball, uh, Fibs, I think, had a better game um, because he tried to keep it simple, just feed Bernard Foley and feed him fast. And I think Bernard Foley uh, did what Mark Eller was asking for, even more so this time. I think if you watch the game again, or the bits that particularly that produced tries, Foley was standing not just uh, a little wider, but a little further, a little closer to the defensive line. Really made himself that target, really drew the ball to him, and we had Fibs cutting out with nice flat pass across to him, and Foley was on the front foot, nice and close, ready to go, with players off either shoulder. One guy who loved that was Hodge, and another guy was Falau. Yeah, I thought Hodge was great, and Falau is doing what uh, increasingly we want him to do, become involved. And you notice there was a great kick to Falau too from Bert of Foley early, early in that game, and uh, there was a good bounce, and that's because they got him involved. So if Falau's not scoring the tries, he's setting the march up. Hodge is a solution. 
He is the solution in midfield. There's no doubt about that. He had a great game. Can he, can he be the solution for our kicking game? <laughs> for our goal kicking? Well, that's the problem. This is, uh, Bernard Foley, I've always had a great rap. As you know, we've sort of uh, had a fight about that every now and then. However, he does have a big deficiency in his boot. He just can't kick further than about 30 metres uh, in general play. So And the goal kicking too. And the goal kicking could be better. It's erratic. But, you know, he did win the Super Rugby final with his goal you kicking. You can't so. hang a career on one boot, mate. <laughs> well, I don't kick. know. I don't know. <laughs> well, you can. Right. Some people can. So um, he's, uh, he's a good player. And I, and I think, you know, playing flat at the line just makes that defensive line commit. And mm. if you're good with your hands, you're going to get rewarded. And that's skill getting rewarded. And it's good to see Australia doing it. You can see some clear backline moves that are a bit deeper that Stephen Larkham uses. Stephen Larkham likes that deep play, the Brumbies play. So they're sort of mixing it up a little bit. Some of that flat line attack as well as the deep stuff. So, and you have to do that. You know, it was good to see. So um, I think it was a good result for Australia. The Grand Slam is a long way to go. Be careful about Scotland coming up next because they are going to be hard to play against. They're, a, they're an awkward team to play against and they'll be fired up. Yeah, Scotland don't concern me as much. You know, I think I think they're probably the team that. So that's we... a problem. If you're not concerned by them, <laughs> they're gonna get you. I'm sure. I'm sure the Wallabies would never. Big say fan not about. By them. I'm a big fan of Scottish rugby, and I, I really love what they do, and they're so important in the game, and uh, they have um, undone the Aussies in recent years. Yeah, look, could be wrong, but I'm not as concerned about the Scottish. I think I think a lot of the talk that we had um, prior to the tour starting was around the English game, whereas quite clearly now the Irish, right, as well, are going to be a massive game. The, the, the game that they can put together. There is one problem. Ireland have come up with a great win. Their first ever over the All Blacks. So they've got to get themselves up again. And uh, that's the difficulty. Um, you'd think they'll be up for the next match, which is it, um, obviously, at their uh, home ground at Aviva Stadium against the All Blacks. Yeah. But I think uh, when they get ready for Australia, where does that fit into their whole realm? Well, I think we talked last week and said that you know, how, how Ireland will be for Australia will be depend on how they go against the All Blacks a lot. And that we've seen that they, that they are up for, you know, top-notch rugby. And I think that they're going to have enough of a structure already in a way they want to play. Um, Dublin, different story, but I think they're going to have enough to really, really trouble Australia. So that's one to watch out for. All right, so Australia, uh, good pass, Mark? Good pass, Mark. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. Wales, has said, came out a bit slow, but Australia did everything you want out of them. Punch it up hard and fast, control the ball. I do want to just talk briefly around that back line. Mm. And I'll, I'll be interested to see what Checker does next with selection. Pocock got hooked at half time yeah. and Fardy came on. Now, as all of you regu regular viewers know, we've been talking for a long time about Fardy getting back in the six. He came out with some venom, I think. Uh, and I think apart from, you know, diving over the ruck a couple of times, uh, he can be a bit loose. Uh, he brought something to the game that clearly Checker did wasn't getting from Pocock. I think Pocock is being crueled by this movement between eight and six. Pocock is a seven. Mm. And I think you have to pick Pocock or Hooper and maybe use them at the end of the game the same way they, way they, used, to, uh, they used to with War and Smith back in the day, finish off maybe with two faster blokes. So I'll be very interested to see what he does in the back row. We might get Fardy back the way we've been asking for to start. Um, and the other thing is, I still think the back line we talked about uh, some weeks and weeks back now, with Falau in at 13, alongside Hodge at 12, and Hale at Petty back to 15, I thought he had a good game too. I still think that's probably the right structure for. Yeah, them. I agree. I prefer. I would prefer Falau at thirteen over Kurandrani. Yeah. Um, Kurandrani had an okay game. He did, but well, I think Falau'd be better there. Yeah, absolutely. And and the other thing is that Falau just keep kicking to him. Like seriously, like we talked about with uh, Pappy, the Australians, they might be taking notes. So from Mark Eller and Brett Papworth when they were on the show. Yeah. So yeah, great work by the Australians. Uh, good win against uh, Wales. Let's see how they go against Scotland as they try and win the Grand Slam for the first time in a long time. Uh, South Africa, 31 all against the British Barbarians. Uh, the Robbie Deans coached uh, Barbarians team. What did you think? Um, I only saw a few highlights today, um, but uh, obviously that result. Uh, and they had to come from behind, uh, wasn't the best. I saw some of their defensive efforts, and they weren't that good, Benny. I could tell you. <laughs> yeah, look, a, a Barbarians game is always an interesting one in that... You yeah, know, but this is a warm-up game, not at yeah, the end. You know it, what I mean? It is, it is. But, you know, you should win a Barbar's game, but they're dangerous because it might get sucked into the way they want to play. And there's often a, some really talented blokes on the other side. I think yeah. I, saw, I saw a couple of highlights try that looked fantastic. I think... Uh, not, oh, they were a good team. Yeah, Barbarians. I, I, and I think not not losing to the Barbars and trying out a few new blokes and a few combinations uh, for the Springboks is probably a, a reasonable result. You've got to hope that they worked a few kinks out, you know, got to know each other a little bit better, and maybe got some, 
you know, uh, mental body connection between the guys that they haven't had for a while on, on what they want to do on the park. Don't know. A, a bar bars game is, is a, you know, it's a, a erratic piece off to the side most of the time. So let's see how they go on the real stuff. Yeah, all right. So they'll have to face England, and uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the big test. So, well, actually, the, the England the England guys have lost a large number of players. Eddie has yeah, Eddie, he's had to dig deep a little bit, much like well, Wales lost about four or five ahead of the Wallabies game. Let's not forget that they weren't quite full strength. Yeah, four or five guys who were probably four of their five of their better guys weren't there. Uh, England also are having a, a bit of an issue uh, losing a few blokes who they would really like to have on the park. So, very interesting to see what happens when the box hit them. Absolutely, and uh, so they're the main players out of the uh, week ends rugby that uh, we can talk about. So fascinating, just awesome stuff, and uh, just exhilarating stuff in Chicago in particular. Uh, now it's time to go to our strike viewer comments. Ben Kimber, you've got a heap of them there on your iPhone. We always have a heap, guys. Thank you again. Don't forget, we like when you comment. It makes us think more about what we're doing. As you know, you influence what comes out of the show, and it's. The quality of the comments we have uh, is unlike any other rugby side I've ever seen. We've got Never some really anyone. great thinkers in there. No, it's great. I just want to call out a few people for different reasons, um, and I'll just run through them quickly. Anton Anaki, who says the misses and he never misses show. Love your work, Anton. Um, Go, Anton. Uh, Martin and Cam Mrs. Anton. <laughs> Martin Cameron posted a nice uh, uh, a little list of things that he took out of the game, uh, the Island New Zealand game, which I thought was great. Uh, Shifty Zim. Um, had a, a, an interesting com conversation with me on there about the Senators because that's going to be really interesting now for the All Blacks. Crotty injured, who has been the bit of the rock for the Senators as he's tried out Fekatawa, he's tried out Moala, he's tried out Anton Leonard Brown, who clearly is the top pick. But now that Crotty's not there anchoring the 12, it's a whole lot of different combos yeah. you can bring together. Shifty had an interesting idea. He actually wanted to put Ben Smith in the Senators with ALB. Why not? And put Damien McKenzie Smith at the back. Ben Smith can do anything. Damien McKenzie at the back. All right, you know, Israel Dad can also play at the back mm. if they need. Yep. Um, Herbert Tanavasa uh, had a really lovely piece uh, mentioning the Munster coach passing away and that Munster were the last Irish team to beat uh, the All Blacks. Oh, can we just talk about that? That's fantastic. The beautiful mm. symbol, the number eight at the uh, Harker. Yeah. I thought that was just a brilliant thing. So, yeah, it was yeah, nice. Anthony Foley, um, to our Irish friends, what a tragedy, but... Great uh, response since his uh, untimely passing. Absolutely. Uh, Honey Puanaki uh, was talking about um, uh, the, the, the last 20 minutes and was impressed that Ireland were there after a couple of training runs, which I thought was an excellent point as well. Uh, Shannon Davis, one of our regulars, made a great point saying that uh, he congratulated Ireland for being the first team to ever defeat the All Blacks after the Kappa Opango uh, oh, yeah, Haka, yeah. So that, you know, that, that, that real, that Previously great Haka. invincible. That's right. Uh, that's a really big point, uh, which I thought was great. Uh, House Davidson, um, uh, nice couple of comments from House. Lay Maxwell, um, also, I think, uh, some really nice stuff in there. Jay Kelly, uh, Jimmy Kipp on YouTube, excellent, excellent points there. Uh, shout out to Bruceless Jake, uh, who asked for one. Uh, and uh, a couple of quick call-outs to David Spence and David Earl Papa, who both posted photos on the Rugger Matrix Facebook page of them out and about. David Spence with a bunch of All Blacks he bumped into in Chicago. And uh, David Earl Papa gets our comment of the week and the Behind the Silver Fern book uh, from TJ, which we'll ship out to you, David. Nice. Um, because he also uh, put a couple of great comments up in general and then poached, uh, posted a picture of himself with Stu Wilson, who he bumped into a cafe, the great <laughs> All Black Stu Wilson. And he told Stu to watch Rugger Matrix. So we love you, David L. Papa. Oh, good on you, David. Well done. Get Stu Wilson on board. And uh, can I just say the Sean McTaggart, our man I met in uh, San Francisco, a, a huge uh, Rugger Matrix fan and a Kiwi, he sent me a direct message before the game saying this would be an interesting match against Ireland to see if the All Blacks have actually been able to move on since the loss of McCaw and Dan Carter. And then I sent him a message back because I got the message before the game and I got the message. I went back to him after and said, clearly not for that occasion. <laughs> so it was a test of their leadership and, and composure and all those sorts of things. So they will have to, uh, they're still learning, I think, after losing those guys. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, good point. And that was beforehand. So uh, great stuff. Uh, ben, we're going to wind it up. Uh, can, I, can I make one more point that yes. I want to say? Another thing I would have checked if I'd watched the game a second time, but I will do. Uh, viewers out there who are watching the game and going having a look, I was really interested to see, okay, you pick Kano for the All Blacks mm. in the second row. Um, we never played international rugby before. Um, alongside Patrick Tupoloto. Uh 
Well, what I found really interesting was Kano packed in on the right. So Kano packed in behind the tight head, uh, which is right in the middle of the engine of the scrum. Uh, one, of the, one of my posts on Facebook, I talked about the, the second row before the All Blacks game saying I really wanted to watch how they went mm -hmm. because when people talk about scrums, they talk so much about the loose head, the tight head, and you know, to a lesser extent the hooker, but they always put all the pressure on the props in terms of the performance of the scrum. But I know from, well, from being a very ordinary player in my, <laughs> in my very young days, but also from talking to a lot of players, um, the, yeah, second, the, second, row, row the second row push yeah. is, is enormously yeah. important for yeah. a scrum. Yeah. And to put the guy who hasn't played second row yeah. in the fulcrum, in the centre of the scrum... We well, you know back rowers don't push. Which just seems <laughs> strange to me. So yeah. if I've got that wrong or, or, or you've seen anything a little bit different, let me know. After speaking to some of the Australian props, I know when Dan Vickerman was playing, they knew he was... They behind. loved having Dan behind them. Because what Dan could do was push, and uh, he was a very aggressive runner as well. Yeah. I, I think there's, there's got to be more to this farty thing too, um, just as a bit of a tangent that you talked about, because I think maybe it's his looseness that's been holding him back. And, and I know this, is, this has happened to players before, where coaches have not been able to sort of heal their player mm. and just maybe, rein in some of those wilder instincts. Yeah, but you want them, you want that sort of aggressiveness and a bit of craziness on the field. So uh, maybe they're sort of uh, getting him in um, somehow. I don't know, but um, maybe that's got something to do with it. I'd, uh, I'll have to ask around it, around the traps and see what else is going on. All right, Ben. There's so much more to go through. Uh, we'll be back next week for that. But uh, wow, what a weekend of rugby! You can have a breather. Congratulations, Ireland. Um, I just, I was blown away. I was speechless by that. And, and how much do you love rugby when you see a game like that? You know, I, w I was nervous the whole if second half. If you can half. see it. Well, I was, uh, true. But I was nervous the whole second half and I, you know, I didn't care who which team won. You know, I was like just enjoying the game. What a great game. Yeah, great game. Ben Kimber, thanks for coming in. Thanks, guys. Co uh, post a comment, like and share us, please. And subscribe on YouTube, please. We need that. All right, there is Ben Kimber. Very, look at that. Aerodynamic, mate. Aerodynamic. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, I've got all that aerodynamic stuff going. All right, there is Ben Kimber. I've been Juro Sen. This has been Rugger Matrix International. Well done, Ireland. And until next week, enjoy your rugby.